And now, Katya Iverson. She is a development professional with more than 20 years of experience in NGOs, the private sector, and UN agencies, and is currently the Chief of Strategic Communication and Public Advocacy with UNICEF. She will speak of victims to powerhouses, the narrative change in maternal and newborn health. And she will speak for eight minutes. Katya. Thank you, Dave. So, research shows that you will remember a maximum of three things about what I say. So I'd like to start by saying what I hope that those three things will be. Words matters. When you, that's one. When you change argument, you can change mindset. When you change the narrative, you can change how people think, and you can change action on the ground. And three, we have, over the last 10 years, changed the narrative around maternal and newborn health, and that has helped propel the topic from being a non-issue to being one of the issues on the top of the development agenda. I spent a good deal of my awake time developing messages, looking what works in communication and advocacy, and trying to make use communication and add public advocacy to make the world a better place for women and children. I will be talking about how the narrative has changed, how the words have changed. I will not, and this is a disclaimer, I will not be talking about the specificities in the technical language around maternal and newborn health, because we could speak about that for hours. So it's not going to be a discussion about midwives or skilled birth attendants or health workers with midwifery skills. It's going to be a much broader brush. It's going to be some of the bigger argument that we use in the public advocacy around this. And as I said, we have seen a dramatic change in the way we tell stories and the language that we use. Um, I can give a couple of examples. When we went into the first Women Deliver conference, or pre-conference, the narrative around maternal and newborn health, and particularly maternal health, was, it's complicated, it's difficult. And today, I've heard it said so many times in this conference, the narrative is, we know what to do. We know the solution. We just need to do it. Back then, it was also, we have seen no progress in 20 years. Today it is, well, these are the results. This is happening. Last year, we could tell the story about how maternal mortality has been halved has been gone down almost 50% in 20 years, and we told the same story around child mortality. As a communicator, that's great to be able to tell those stories. Back at the first Women Deliver conference in 2007, we spoke about stories of mothers lost. Terrible stories told by families and communities about how they lost a loved one. They were beautiful in their terrible way, but they kept focusing on what went wrong and not on what we can do. In 2010, we had the stories about mothers saved, where we had mothers themselves tell the story, the near misses, about how they didn't die. And that was powerful to hear those stories from all over the world, and it was really upbeat. We also back then spoke about women die, and now we, we, spoke, we speak about how women deliver, and not only babies, but in general. So we have seen the change in the argumentation. We have also seen the change in the words. So before, we mostly spoke about mothers. Now we speak about women, not just as as women, not just as mothers, but as women. We speak about women and girls. We speak about quality, not just quantity. We speak about equity. We speak about equality. We speak about women as agents of, cha agents of change, as powerhouses. We've seen the argumentation go from a moral argumentation, health-focused, victimizing way of talking about it, to uh, economic, invest in women at pace, to human rights-based, to 
empowered women who can take who could take charge of their own destinies. A severe change in the way we look at it. We have positioned it, the whole issue of maternal and newborn health, as a development issue, not just a health issue, and not just a woman's issue. So it's more upbeat. It speaks to the head with evidence, with data. We have the new countdown uh, report just came out the other day that gives the whole data, the whole situation in the 75 high burden countries. So we have the data to back this up. So we can convince the head. We still have the stories, the devastating stories, but also the good stories that can touch the heart. In storytelling, this is absolutely essential. We've seen a change in who speaks about it. As a high level uh, UN woman said when she came out of the launch of the Every Woman, Every Child uh, movement in 2010, she said, this topic is gonna make it. I know that the room was filled with gray suits. It is not just a woman's issue. It's not just women talking to women about women's and children's issue. It's heads of states, it's ministers, and not just ministers of health, it's celebrities, it's academics, it's frontline workers using the new tools in communication to really get the stories from the field really close to everybody who needs to listen. So the choir has gotten bigger and it's gotten much, much louder. We also, and I don't want to forget that, we have seen women themselves speak. If I can give you an example, i never forget her, Ine from Nigeria. You have her sitting, there's three children crawling all over her. She has just told the story about how she almost died, but that how a midwife saved her life. And she's saying, if I was the president, I would look to the women because they built this, they built this society, and I would build a clinic, and I would make sure there was transportation. We should look to the women, and we know what we need. So it is not a victim speaking, it's a powerhouse, it's somebody who can change. So we have seen a severe change in the wording, in the argumentation, and I will claim that that is one of the things that has helped propel this issue from a non-issue to on the top of the development agenda. We have challenges, and I want to point to two of them. We could talk about money, many others does that. I don't want to do that. I want to say we have to speak so other people can understand it. There's a lot of technical lingo, technical language in our, in our, in our movement, in our community, in, in, in our field. People don't understand that. When people don't understand, they turn away and they'll go somewhere else. Second, we need to integrate. We can't just talk about maternal health and women. We need to talk about the broader picture. Nutrition, agriculture, economy, environment. If we want to position this in the 2015 framework, we need to be able to show how it is important and not just for women themselves. And we need to be, a, we need to, if I may just make one, we need to both talk about children, newborn, and, and women, and mothers. It's not a win, it's not a win-lose, so if the children get that, the, we can't talk about women, it's a win-win when we can position the whole continuum of care. So, speak to the heart, convince it, speak to the head and convince it, and touch the heart, and let's keep telling the stories about why this is important. Thank you. <laughs>